Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight video. Thanks for dropping by my channel, making it your new spot for cyber and network knowledge. Today's video is uh, based off of some requests that I got on Twitter to uh, talk a little bit about switch port trunks uh, and specifically how to improve the uh, security configurations with those. So we're gonna take a look at how to configure them, what are some security best practices and some types of layer two attacks that we can mitigate with the right type of configurations. And you know what I'm gonna say now because you know the deal already. Go ahead, hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. That way you don't miss out whenever I drop any new content. And we're gonna go ahead and jump into switch port trunks. So there's two main types of trunking. There's ISL, which is a Cisco proprietary uh, protocol that's used for trunking. And there's 802.1Q, which is uh, open standard and used across many different types of devices. Um, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, we'd be talking about ISL. We're not really doing that anymore. So for the rest of the video, whenever I'm talking about trunking, I'm talking about 802.1Q trunking. All right, so let's start with the basics. We know that a VLAN is a logical way to break a network up into different types of groups, right? And so whenever you do that, each VLAN is assigned its own number or a VLAN tag. And what trunking is, is it allows you to send multiple types of VLANs over one physical interface. And normally you're gonna use a, a trunking interface when you're connecting two different sw switches to each other, or if you're uplinking to your gateway and you have multiple VLANs going over that to get up to uh, whatever device is gonna be doing the routing for each of those VLANs. So when normal VLAN traffic goes to go over trunk port, the switch applies a 802.1Q frame tag that has the original VLAN ID associated uh, with the VLAN traffic that will be going over the trunk. So it puts this tag onto the frame, sends it over the trunk interface. Once it gets over to the other side, the next switch ends up taking that frame off. In order to get a trunk to be operational between two switches, there's a few things that you have to do. First off, you have to put both of the interfaces on each switch that you're gonna be connecting together into uh, either trunk mode or into a dynamic mode that will negotiate to being a trunk. So in essence, both ends of the connection need to be a trunk. The second thing you have to do is you need to make sure that the native VLAN is set to the same on both sides of the trunk. Now you might be asking, okay, well, what's this native VLAN? Well, really a native VLAN is just whatever VLAN you want to assign that if it if the switch doesn't see any type of tag associated with it, it will put it into that default native VLAN. So we got uh, two interfaces, each on different switches connected together, both set up in a switch port trunk mode, and then we both have uh, the same native VLAN assigned on both switches. At that point, if you did that, you'd be able to get an operational trunk up between two switches and you'd be able to send stuff back and forth. And that's great, but it's not secure in any way, or at least not in the way that we would wanna be doing when we're implementing uh, best practices within a LAN environment. So there's four main things that we wanna do if we're gonna do this in some type of secure manner. And the first one is, we wanna make sure that we only have interfaces enabled to be trunks that we want to be trunks. So the thing that I mentioned before about having dynamic ports, which could auto-negotiate to a switch port or auto-negotiate to a trunk, we don't want any part of that. If it's gonna be a trunk, we're gonna statically set it to a trunk. If it's not gonna be a trunk, we're gonna statically assign it as an access port, and that way that will leave no ability for somebody to go and plug something in somewhere where they shouldn't automatically have it negotiate to a trunk by chance and have some type of VLAN hopping uh, situation going on within the environment. The second thing we want to do is by default, the trunk is going to allow any VLAN that's on the switch to go over the trunk interface. That's not a good thing either. Normally, whenever you have a switch connected to other types of devices, it's really just best practice to set a VLAN limit on the trunk interface so that you're only permitting certain VLANs to actually go over that trunk. If it's connecting to a switch that doesn't have uh, 
other VLANs on it that are necessary to have that traffic going back and forth, there's no reason to allow that traffic to happen. So it's better to be very, very specific with the particular VLANs that you wanna have going across the trunk. The third thing that we wanna do is something that I mentioned briefly before, and that was with the native VLAN. Well, the native VLAN by default across any Cisco switch, we all know what it is, it's VLAN one. And so if you leave uh, your interface is all in VLAN one and you go with whatever the default is, uh, with your trunk and not actually set it to something else, um, then pretty much any device that gets plugged into a port that has the default configuration is then gonna be able to go across all of your trunk interfaces. So again, just a very, very easy configuration to do is you create a unique VLAN that isn't gonna be used for anything or anything else. And you take that and you assign that as your native VLAN on both sides of uh, your trunk interfaces. And that way nobody will be able to plug into a port that's accidentally configured for that native VLAN because it's gonna be a VLAN that you don't use for anything. And then that way you'll be able to uh, limit that type of attack. The fourth thing builds on top of that a little bit more, and that is you shouldn't have VLAN one being used for anything in your environment. So go through, make sure that you aren't actually using it for anything operational. And then also, instead of using it as a default on all of your unused ports, go ahead and create uh, another VLAN that you're gonna use, a dead VLAN, if you wanna call it that, that you can go ahead and you can put all of your unused ports into that VLAN. And then also, don't allow that VLAN across the trunks. Uh, it's gonna make things be a little bit more secure and locked down to that individual switch. You have that as your default configuration for any of your unused ports put it in a dead VLAN, shut the port down. You really make it so that it's a lot harder for somebody to just come and plug something in somewhere into a wall socket and then automatically have an active connection on your switch ports. All right, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on my computer. We're gonna take a look at Packet Tracer, which is a cool free tool from Cisco that allows you to go through different types of configurations. I'm gonna walk you through how we'd go about setting up a trunk interface between two switches and then show you the specific configurations that I talked about uh, here as best practices for configuring trunks in a secure manner. What we got going on here is we're in Packet Tracer, as I said, the free Cisco tool that allows you to configure um, different types of scenarios with different types of devices. This is gonna be super, super basic. We're just talking about two switches, one trunk in between them. We'll set up some VLANs. We'll configure the interfaces the correct way. Uh, so that's going to be your allowed VLANs across the link. That's going to be your um, native VLAN set correctly. Um, and I think that's, I think those are the main things. We'll make sure that oh, the uh, ports aren't in VLAN one for kicks and giggles as well. So, all right. So into switch zero. All right, so we're going to get into the CLI on this guy. We'll make this a little bit bigger. Let's see. I think we already had, yep. So interface GI01 is going to be the connected one. So we'll just take a look at this real quick. There's nothing going on on there. So we will go conf T, interface GI01. Switch port mode trunk, because remember we don't want to do that dynamic mode, right? Let's take a look. We're going to create, we'll create three. Now let's create four different VLANs on here. VLAN database, VLAN two, VLAN three, VLAN four, and VLAN five. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. through VLAN 5, VLAN database, VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 4, and VLAN 5. 
Okay, and then we're also going to go interface gi one zero slash one. Oh, we have to exit exit out of the VLAN database. Interface gi gi zero slash one. Switch port mode trunk. Okay. Now, if I do a show interface trunk over on switch zero, we're going to see that zero one is the interface. It's using 802.1Q. Remember, I said we're not talking about ISL anymore. The native VLAN is one, which we're going to fix that. And then it's allowing all of the regular VLANs across the trunk. Again, that's something else that we're going to have to fix. So let's go ahead and configure this in a way where it's a little bit more secure. So we're going to go back into interface GI 0 slash 1. We are going to allow, let's say, uh, we definitely don't want one going across there, right? That's bad. Um, but let's say not all of 2, 3, 4, and 5 need to go over there. Let's just go 2, 3, and 4. So go switch port trunk, allowed VLAN, 2 through 4. Okay, so you are able to use the hyphen to do ranges. Um, if you wanted to do more than that, you could, uh, if we had more and we were more VLANs, um, you could do different ranges and combine them into the, the same command there if you wanted to. Um, so like 2 through 4 and 6 through 8 if you wanted to. Um, but we're just going to go 2 through 4. Uh, one important thing, this is really important because a lot of people screw this up. So when you are adding VLANs, especially in the future, you have a trunk that's already configured, already established, and you want to go and add an additional VLAN to it, you don't go switch port trunk allowed VLAN and that new VLAN. It will overwrite the whole configuration. It's going to be a bad day for you. Don't do that. What you do is switch port trunk allowed VLAN add and then the number of what you want there. And likewise, if you wanted to remove something from there, you go switch port trunk allowed VLAN remove and then the specific number that you want to do. So that will save your butt. For real, I've seen that go sideways for people uh, in production environments many times before. So don't do that. It's bad. So uh, we have those there. Um, let's go and do the native VLAN as well. Switch port trunk native VLAN. We'll just make something up 900. OK, so if we get out of this here. Right, we should be able to go show interface trunk. Right, and what do we got? The native VLAN is um, 900, and you're gonna see here that we have a VLAN mismatch. And the reason that we have a VLAN mismatch, it tells you right here, 900 and one. So because we set the native VLAN here on switch zero to 900, and we haven't done it yet on uh, switch one, the v native VLAN is still VLAN one. That's going to give your trunk a whole bunch of problems. It's going to mean that the traffic isn't going to be able to flow across the trunk. Again, that's another bad day. Don't do that. Um, if you have to change the, uh, the trunks, or I should say, if you have to change the native VLANs on the trunks, you, that needs to be a coordinated effort. Don't accidentally fat finger that or don't even play around with that command if you don't need to because it will make it so the traffic won't be able to go down the trunks. And depending upon your path of being able to manage the device, that could be another way to have a pretty bad afternoon. So, so we are back into that. So let's go over into this guy. And we'll see, yep, he has the same error over here, native VLAN mismatch. So let's fix that. So we were under that interface. We needed to go switch port trunk allowed VLAN two through four, and then switch port trunk native VLAN 900. Okay. Now we should be able to do show interface trunk. Did it not like my trunk? Oh, it helps when I put the right command in. Native VLAN 900. 
Let's do that show interface trunk. Okay, and we should be good with that. We'll stop getting those error messages. We haven't seen another one come in yet. Um, so now those now those are both configured on the interfaces correctly. So we have the allowed VLANs. We have the native VLAN set to something other than uh, VLAN 1. Uh, we could go ahead and create the dead VLAN if we wanted to and put that uh, on all the other interfaces. So for instance, if we, we wanted to do that, let's create a dead VLAN here for, for kicks and giggles. And get out of config mode because this is an old switch. So we got to go VLAN database, VLAN 100, name, there we go, dead VLAN. Yep, you learn something new every day or relearn it, I should say. So. There we go. So now we can do a do show interface status. Actually, let me get out of the VLAN first. Show interface status. So we got uh, FA01 through 24. They're all in VLAN one. Let's change that. So we're gonna do a interface range FA0 slash one through 24. All right. If we were doing best practices, we were being smart here, what we're going to do is for unused interfaces, we would put them uh, in that dead VLAN. So switch port mode access. Remember, we don't want it dynamically trying to become uh, a trunk port. So we're going to set it to an access port, switch port mode access, and then switch port access VLAN 100 for the dead VLAN. Switch port access VLAN 100, right? And then of course, we're gonna shut the interface. Oh, how pretty is that? So all the interfaces are shut, put in the dead VLAN, not gonna be able to uh, auto negotiate to uh, being a trunk port. So eh, it's not, not too bad, not too bad. All right, uh, let's take a look. Show interface status. There we go, disabled and in VLAN 100, so a lot better than we were doing before. Um, I think that is about it. I think I did mention that what we were trying to do here was protect against uh, VLAN hopping techniques. Um, I'll throw up a little description. I actually wrote a section in a book for the Pentest Plus certification. I actually wrote up a little section on what uh, VLAN hopping is and other types of layer two attacks. Um, so I'll throw that up here, leave it up here for a little bit so you can read it and you can kind of understand why we were doing the things we were doing. The stuff that we're doing is very simple, very easy. Uh, the types of attacks that they protect against are very basic, but if you don't do it, then whose fault is it really if you get some type of basic attack done in your network? I mean, obviously, who's ever trying to do something malicious is going to try and do whatever is the easiest thing to do. So you might as well not make it completely too easy for them. All right, so that wraps up trunks and how to configure them securely. As always, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. I'll get back to you. I'll love to hear the feedback, negative or positive. We're just going to keep trying to make this channel better and better, and I'm going to keep trying to put out content that matters to you guys. So let me know what it is that you're interested in. I'll look at putting something together for you. As always, hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. That way you don't miss out on whenever I drop any new content. Take care of yourself, your family, your friends. Be safe. We'll talk soon.